you can tame your police a little bit. It doesn't fix the tyranny. Politicians don't fix the tyranny. We got to stand up. We got to be principled in our defiance, but you can tame the police. And I want to tell you a little bit about that tonight. See, last night, if you watched the video, and if you didn't, it's on my page and it's on my YouTube channel. I also made a slightly shorter version on my YouTube channel because the the long version sometimes drag. It has all the filler and stuff. So I just kind of took out the, the middle points and got it down to about 12 minutes if you want to see the highlights of what happened. Almost got arrested, my whole family kidnapped, because these cops have no self-control and they're bullies. It's not about their safety. Now people are saying, oh Gavin, you were there, you were there harassing cops. In fact, the, one of the officers in charge said, you're here harassing us, which is a ridiculous assertion. I was simply there to observe and make sure they didn't abuse because police in America are so abusive. We have to start watching these people. And people say to me, oh, the, 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 the beat cop on the street is not the place to do that. That's wrong. That is absolutely a lie. If you want to make change, if you want to turn the world upside down, you make the individual who is violating people's rights in their community, you shame them by standing up to them. You, you make it normal. You know what the foundation in the marketing world is, you show people that it's being done by others and that it's okay to do so. Why do these police think it's okay to treat people like this? Because they have a bunch of sycophants that are friends or work for the government, and they have a society that's promoted the idolatry and the worship of police. There's so many people telling them you guys are the good guys that they actually think it's true even though they're a crime syndicate. And every one of these police officers, a lot of them I'm sure probably get into policing hoping to do good, right? Some of them are just bullies. Some of them get into policing hope to, hoping to do good, and those are the probably the ones we deal with that are a little bit nicer and more cordial, okay? But what happens is they get into the system, they brainwash them, they, they get them to be a member of the syndicate called the Blue Line, and pretty soon they're out there abusing people for money because the way the system's set up, you cannot be a cop and not abuse people unless you're willing to stand up to the system and ultimately get fired. That's a different story. Let's talk about taming your cops real quick, okay? Because we're seeing this all over the country. You know, yeah, the Texas cops, they seem to be real militant, but it's everywhere. You, you could run into this in your town, it could be anywhere. But here's the thing, thank you all. Here's the thing, taming the police. These, these couple of cops I dealt with last night, it was pretty intense, right? People watching live, my sister, hi Tammy. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday to my mom. It's her birthday today, my mom Sue, so say happy birthday to her. But my sister's like, I don't like watching you live with these police. I'm afraid I might watch them live and they're going to shoot you. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really like that idea either. But I was thinking about these cops, right? These little podunk little town cops that are bullies. And then I was thinking about the cops in my town. The cops in my town are the same way, right? Except they don't treat me the same way. And they've actually backed off on their behavior because I've had so many instances with them. So let's say, let's say I went down tomorrow and I did the same thing to that same officer. I'll bet that her behavior will be completely different. She probably wouldn't threaten to arrest me. She'd probably glare at me. She'd probably walk away, act like I was a bad guy and I was harassing her, but probably leave me alone. Remember the cop in Boise? It was one of my earlier incidents where I stood up to her and she just kind of walked away frustrated. See that, that woman, those petty little kids down there that were like high school bullies where they're exerting their authority, right? And yet, if, we, if, if, if I went and did it again, or if you did it in your town tomorrow, if you lived in that town, their response would be different because now they've caught flack. So what we're doing, when you make it normal that people are filming and standing up, that they're stopping and watching their stops, right? It doesn't mean your cops are good. It doesn't mean they're honoring their oath and defending people's rights when they're actually out there violating them and working with tow truck drivers to steal people's cars over the pettiest of human infractions doesn't mean they're good or that our job is done. They're still out there harassing and collecting because they think that they're the thin wall between order and chaos when in fact they're being trained to create the chaos in the name of order. But you tame them each time you interact with them and be bold. Right. So last night we saw this example. You know, I had to deal with a situation where I did a little bit of a tactical retreat. I didn't do what they wanted me to. I didn't leave and turn the camera off, but I backed off a few feet. Right. I gave them a little bit so that they thought they'd gained something, even though really not much had changed. I was still there 20 feet away, further away filming them. Right. But if I did that again tomorrow, their response will be different because they've dealt with the fallout now 
of people saying that's not okay. They're so used to everybody worshiping at their feet, licking their boots and calling them heroes because they show up at the local community center and give a girl a Barbie, right? They like to do these things that make them look like the good guys in society. Well, guess what, cops? Lots of people give little kids gifts and mow lawns and help old ladies across the street. It doesn't make you the savior of the world. There's only one of those. But we can tame them by doing activism. People say, what's the point? You're looking for 15 minutes of fame, which is a bit silly at this point because I've done videos for years now. I have this backlog of all these videos and I'm thinking about all these times I've interacted with police. And the more I interact with police in a different area, the more they back off. Not because most of the time they're better, but because they learn they don't want to deal with it. They learn that when people stand up, they're a bully mindset. And when people stand up to a bully, they might still be a bully, but they will back off, you guys. So if you are if you live in Clute, Texas, and you go take on your cops, it's going to be easier for you tomorrow because I worked there yesterday. And so in my town, I'll just stop and watch my cops frequently. They know I'm watching them. I'll tell them I'm keeping my eye on you guys. And so they know I'm watching. Really, that's the same with most of the police in my area. Now in my whole region that I'm in, in central Washington, for the most part, because of me and others doing activism and, and you know local cop watch groups and stuff, they're getting used to this. They're getting used to being observed. Now this is just one step. It's an education step. It's a way to tame the police so they're not completely psychotic. So they're not just twitchy, trigger happy nuts who want to arrest and kill people. That's what we want to avoid. And people are going to mock me for what I'm saying. They're saying, oh, you're exaggerating, Gavin. No, I'm not. There is no more of a violent criminal gang in all of America than the Blue Line. They are the most dangerous and high profile and the biggest gang problem that America faces. The, the Blue Line is far worse in America than ISIS. It, that's a fact. They killed 1,152 people last year, guys. Does that mean every officer wants to kill people and ruin their lives? No. But it does mean that the blue line, when I say the blue line, I'm talking about the system, the faction. I admire the officers that step out of that, that realize that what they're doing is wrong and that stand up to it. But they don't stay members of the blue line. They get outed, right? So these officers last night threatened my life because that's what an arrest is. It is a threat of lethal force. Make no mistake. And if you think it's not, you've never been arrested. It's a threat of lethal force. They threatened my family who would have been stolen away from me. And so thank God it worked out good, right? We're blessed. But there's lessons to be learned because when we stand up, we start conversations. We educate our community. We show people that it's okay to stand up, that other people are doing it. And we also tame. We rein in our local government, even if only a little, which is a start. You rein them in to try and reduce the abuse a little bit in your community, and then you keep pushing until you finally change people one at a time until they realize this isn't okay and the system starts changing. It's a long slog, guys. It's not going to get fixed by checking a box at the ballot box. We've got to stand up. That means you. That means me. That means us. Every one of us in our own way, but we got to do bold things. You need to start picking up cameras. We need to start being consistent, persistent. You need to start putting those cameras out there, aiming them at our government, going to the meetings. It's okay to be disruptive sometimes. As long as as long as it's uh, in a principled way. And thanks, James. I think we're okay, um, but uh, you can certainly message me off the, off the thing, and we'll see how we do tomorrow in terms of getting the truck repaired. But long story short, you stand up, you educate people, you tame your local officers a bit from being just like trigger-happy people who think everyone's out to get them to realizing, oh, it's just the local patriot, it's the local activist, and whatever, right? Hi, Lindsay. And you use these things as conversations, as voices, to expose the corruption, to expose the political prisoners, to free people like the Hammonds, Joe Robertson, Jerry DeLumis, the Bundy, Schaefer Cox, Jeff Winehouse. You get people standing up, and we, we, we continue standing up, doing activism, making videos across the country like, like Lindsay, like Kelly, like John Lamb. You spread the message, and you get the fires of liberty burning in people's hearts. And some days it seems like such a slow process, but you light those sparks across the land and you appeal to heaven. You get yourself straight, you get yourself right, and you try to grow. And these principles work everywhere. They do work everywhere. Human nature is not different. 
There's certain cultural differences. There's certain things we deal with. But people say, you can't do this in my state. You'd never get away with that there. Guys, I've, I counted recently how many states I've done activism on the street. And it's something like 12 or 15 states now. It's not just in my community. It's not just because they know me. I go out and I do it all over because I run into things. I see things and I say, well, hey, I need to love my neighbor a little bit and stand up here. You know, I need to watch this. I need to observe. I need to set an example. We all start doing that. We all start standing up. We all start speaking out. And we change the world. That's how it works.